In this lesson, we will learn about how to create a schema. So table lies in a schema. That's the reason we are learning schema before creating tables. Schema is nothing but a placeholder for runtime objects. So before creating table, view, procedure, any object, we need to decide in which schema we want to create. Here you can see the list of schemas under the catalog folder. So dev, HANA access base, HANA SAP authorization, all these are schemas and T4H is one of our schema which we used in our earlier sessions. And these are the system schemas comes by default with SAP HANA installation. So let's see there is another way to see the list of schemas by using system standard view. Select star from schemas. If you run this, you will get the list of schema names and their schema owner and whether the owner has a privilege or not. And you can ignore all these entries. I don't know what are they. So if you observe this list, every schema has a owner. So that means when you create a user, automatically it creates a schema name with the same username. So when you connect to the HANA system, you might have observed the schema name on your name. Like if your user ID is some ABC123, then you will see ABC123 schema as well in and under the catalog folder. So let's see how that works. So let's open SQL console and leave this statement. So I'll create a user by using SQL. You can use, you can create user from the security option, user, new user. So this is another option, but I would like to go with SQL. Create user T4H already there. So I'm creating new one, new. And we need to give password. Time for HANA. So I'll execute this statement. Successfully created. Okay, now we created a T4H new schema. But if I refresh this catalog, T4H new is not exist here. But if we run this schema, uh, this select statement, and we don't see that schema at here. Okay, so what we know is every user have a have their own schema. So now we have a new user called T4H new. So I'm adding another entry for the T4H new user. Time for HANA. So it will ask me to change the password. So I changed the password and connected with new user called T4H new. If I open the catalog, I can see the T4H new schema. The list of schemas are differed from the system and T4H new. System user is the one who, who manages the HANA database. So it's like an admin user and system user will have more authorizations compared to the any other user. So T4H as of now, T4H have only access to T4H new and few other system schemas. Okay. So how we can make this schema available to other users? 
in our case to the system user. So to make that available, let's run one statement. It will create, it will provide the access. Grant select on schema and then schema name t4h underscore new to which user. So I'll provide this key access to system user. So if I run this statement, it will grant select select access to t4h new user. So if I run this, it will give error because feature not supported. Grantor and grantee are identical. So what I am trying to do from here, I connected with system user. You can see here system user and I am providing the access to system user. So the grantor and grantee both are same. It should not, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. Let's copy and open SQL, another SQL window. This time I am connected with T4H new and this executed successfully. So now I'm going back to system catalog and I can see T4H new now in, in catalog folder of system user. So that's how we provide access. We create a schema and provide access to other users. So it's not always required to create a user to create a schema. We can create a schema directly. So I'm coming back to the system console and before executing, before deleting the user, we'll quickly run this statement and see T4H new, the owner of the schema is T4H new and he has a privileges. So that's how the user and schema created. Now system user have access to see the schema. That's why this SQL return the T4H new entry in this. Okay, let's drop user. So to drop a user, simple drop user T4H new. So user deleted successfully. Now if I refresh this, invalid username or password. Okay, now I am, so that means user is deleted. So I am removing this entry. And now if I refresh this catalog, T4H new should go away. See T4H and then test the T4H new is gone. So as I said, it's not required to create a user every time to create a schema. So we can create a schema directly. Create schema T4H new. So this time I'm creating schema directly. If I run this, now my system user will have access to the schema by default. T4H new. And if we run this statement again, T4H new, now the owner is system user because I created this schema with system user. That's why the owner will be the default system user. And this is not required. So, yeah. So that's how we can create a schema and if any other user need that need access to that schema, then we provide grant select on schema to user. So let's finish this session by deleting this schema. Again, drop schema T4H new. So if I refresh it now, T4H is gone. So that's all about the schema and the points you need to remember is 
always when you create a user the schema will be created with the same name and when you drop the user schema will drop automatically and it's not required to create a user every time to create a schema you can create schema directly and the owner of the schema by default the user who is creating the schema and for other users you need to provide select access or create access modify access based on the requirement so here i am providing i provided select access but you can provide modify create access something like that okay more of this is more of security point of view we not we no need to bother about it but you should know that every schema will have uh, have a owner like select star from schema schemas is useful uh, view so remember it and you can see the owner who 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 is the owner of that schema okay thank you see you in the next session